Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to this ancient holy place and to this service of Holy Eucharist as we come together to share and receive it, the body of Christ. For those who may not have been in the last couple of weeks, we have made a change to the way we distribute communion. So we now distribute the bread from the platform here. We'll ask you at the invitation of Susie to come forward, still maintaining social distancing and in your bubbles. Um, and then we'll start in the middle and come forward and ask you to follow your, back to your seats going round the side. And for the people who are sitting down the side, if you can go round the back, and come down the middle and again. So we always have this circular movement. Hopefully that makes sense. And blessings will be done in the same way. And do you please be aware that we're also filming this service to be uploaded on our website later today for those who have been unable to attend this morning. So if you don't wish to appear, even if it's the back of your head uh, on the film, then please do let Susie know and we can come to your seats in those circumstances. Thank you. Today we hear how Jesus, the Good Shepherd, knows us as his own. He gives his life for us, he cares for us, protects us, and he invites us to work together to share his love, his love that has no end. May we listen to his voice. First, let us call to mind our sins, remembering that God is always quicker to forgive than we are to confess. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in, in the highest. highest. And, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King almighty God, God and Father, we, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in words or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. 
All who obey his commandments obey, abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. to the springs of the water of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Once at a social gathering, a great actor was present, and he was asked to recite for the pleasure of all his fellow guests. He agreed and asked those who were there if there was any particular thing they would like him to recite for them. After a pause, an elderly priest who was present asked if he would recite Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd. A strange look came over the actor's face and he said, I will but on one condition, that after I have recited it, you, my friend, will do the same. And so the actor began the psalm in his impressive voice. The intonation was magnificent and he held his audience spellbound. As he finished, a huge round of applause arose from all those who were gathered there. And after it had died away, the old priest got up and began to proclaim the same psalm. His voice wasn't very remarkable, nor was his tone faultless. But when he finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. The actor rose again, and his voice quivered as he said, Ladies and gentlemen, I reached your ears and your eyes. He has reached your hearts. The difference is this. I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. This morning, both the Gospel reading that we've just heard from John's Gospel and that earlier reading that David read for us from one of St John's letters, both of them talk about Jesus laying down his life for us, for his sheep, for his flock. In the Gospel, that's couched in that image very clearly. Jesus talks about how he is the Good Shepherd, how he knows his flock, how he loves them and cares for them, and that he lays down his life willingly. And we told he does that because of the deep care that he has. And the challenge is then given in the Epistle that we're called to live similarly to this, to care for others with a love that is shown in truth and action, John says, not just shown in merely words or speech, but in truth and action. A case of not just talking the talk, but also walking the walk. Later today, as we hold our annual meeting and consider where our life together with God is, and where our life together with one another is, and where that might be going into the future, it's vital that we make it our primary focus in all of our Christian lives to know the Shepherd, to know Jesus as our risen Lord, to know God in the midst of our life, both individually and together. And that we know him as the one who seeks to hold us together in his love, to keep us safe from those things that can destroy our unity or tear us apart as a community of beloved children. When we consider the Gospel passage, we recognise it's not just the wolf coming that's the problem, as Jesus tells that story. It's also the fact that the person looking after the sheep, if it's the hireling, isn't the right person to do that. The hireling, we're told, has no care for the flock. They're not his. The hireling only cares for him or herself. The hireling seems to be more concerned about their own safety, maybe about their own reputation or reward or remuneration. They're certainly not concerned about keeping the flock safe, about keeping the people together. Not only is the quality of our life together in God's church dependent upon us knowing Christ the Shepherd and the all-encompassing love that he has for us, it's dependent too upon each of us seeking to model our lives similarly towards one another. And the evidence of this is a flock which is united, a flock that is safe, a flock that is free to be what we're called to be. 
Think back to when we first began to celebrate this Easter season. One of those first readings we have is of Jesus appearing in that locked room with his disciples. They're fearful, they're anxious, they think that they are in danger. But Jesus frees them from that. Through his love and through his protective care, through his presence in their lives and in their midst, he's able to free them to be the people that go out and begin to tell others about what they have seen and heard. And then time and time again after that first appearance, we hear over these weeks of Easter all those different stories about how Jesus appears among them on the road to Emmaus, on the beach, as we heard last week, on the Mount of Ascension, as he leaves them with his blessing and promises them the gift of the Holy Spirit. He tries to help them to see that it's not merely words that are important. It's not going to be just them telling the story of the resurrection and the new life that they have found that's important. It's about how they relate together. It's about how their lives and their actions will show the truth of what they have found. They will proclaim the gospel through all of that that they are, through their love and their trust and their confidence in God and their relationship together with each other, their togetherness in Christ. Of course, words will be part of that, but it will be their ability to bring to bear love and forgiveness and peace and healing, which will be even more convincing to the people they meet. All of that is rooted in them knowing the shepherd. The growth of the church, both spiritually and numerically, is what blossoms from that. Us knowing the shepherd as individuals and as a community together. This week I watched a short video in which a vicar over in Stockport was speaking about something that she'd heard said that had challenged her. And it also challenged me. She said she'd heard a speaker say that we judge ourselves on our intentions, but that others judge us on our impact. And that made me stop and think and pray a little. We judge ourselves on our intentions, but others judge us on our impact. Being full of good intentions to know Christ, to pray, to be instruments of peace and hope and love, to live the values of the kingdom of God, are worthy. But if that's all they are, simply intentions, then they're fruitless. They're fruitless for ourselves, and they're fruitless for our mission as God's church. Think about what John says in that letter we heard read from today. Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this we will know that we are from the truth. This is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Now that doesn't sound too hard as a commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son and love one another. But of course, as we grow into trying to do that, we recognise that it isn't always easy, either to love Christ with all our heart, our soul, our mind and strength, or to love one another. But that's at the heart of what it is to know the shepherd. That's what he calls us to. And the impact of our faith of our relationship with the risen Christ will be how we speak most powerfully to others. It won't always mean laying down our life for other people, but it will mean laying down part of our pride. It will mean laying down those things that sometimes we would love to do, but for the good of our community, we need to do something else. It will mean sometimes taking up the tower of humble service and growing in that committed love that sees each of us as valued and loved by God. Of putting our desires on hold when sometimes they hamper or mar the shepherding of Christ, bringing his flock together in safety. As we wait upon the voice of Jesus our shepherd, 
to call us on again into discipleship after this last year of limitation and change. Let us be ready to obey the commandment, both to know Christ and to know his love, and to share that love through having been with him. In the name of that living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you now please stand for the creed as we proclaim together our common faith. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Holy God, your son remained with his disciples for 40 days after his resurrection teaching them to love all people as friends and neighbours. We too are his disciples and we offer our prayers on behalf of the church, the world in which we live and all those with whom we share it. We pray for your church reaching out to care for and protect all who are lost and longing to belong to a fellowship of love. Help us to aspire to love with actions and truth and not merely with words or speech following the example of Christ, the Good Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for all world leaders that they may hear and recognise the voice of the Prince of Peace and that, by, and that by using Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, as the ultimate model of leadership, they would lead and care for their own flocks in such a way that peace might abound righteousness flourish, and injustice be eradicated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Our vocation is to be children of God, our hearts filled with love, integrity and joy. We pray for ourselves and the, and the communities in which we live, work and worship, that we may care for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we thank God that the numbers affected by COVID are falling here, we pray for all those less fortunate affected by the virus throughout the world, and especially in India, where infection rates are continuing to rise and supplies of oxygen are running short. We pray for all those in the caring professions, that the Lord's compassion may be visible in them. We pray for your strength for those who are tired and your love for those who are distressed and fearful that they may know that they are held safely in your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who do not know your peace, 
and for those who are struggling with their lives. We pray for those who call on the name of Jesus Christ in their sufferings, that they may experience God's healing power. Remembering those on our parish prayer list, Lily Rose Amadi, David Arnold, Lorraine Bevan, Nigel Bertrissel, Ada Etherington, Graham Fleet, Andrew Hardman, Helen Hicks, Deborah Kay, Heather Kay, Elaine Kirk, Lisa Jean Murphy, James O'Meara, Rever Reverend Deborah Sandercott Pickles, Mariam Sadihi, Beverly Taylor, and John Whitaker. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who now walk in a valley of the shadow of death. We know from the psalm that you are with them and have gone before them to prepare them a table overflowing with all good things. Guide those who are left behind in a path of righteousness and uphold them in their sorrow with the assurance of your goodness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are your people and we thank you for your care and protection. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do your bidding, always mindful of your amazing love for us. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the good shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us again extend a very warm welcome to everybody here in church again this morning. The new sheets uh, will have been sent out yesterday and once again if you're not on our mailing list please do let us know and we can add you to that so we can keep you informed of things that are going on. Um, Wednesday private prayer will be on again from 12 to 1 as usual and uh, three other things just to draw to your attention. First one is our annual church meeting takes place after this service by Zoom. Um, so we would invite you really to try, if you possibly can, to join that. It's at 12 o'clock. The Zoom meeting details have already been sent out last week with all the papers, but the Zoom link is also on the new sheet. Um, so if you do, would like to join us, please do, and dial in at 12 o'clock. Hopefully we'll be home in time to open it up for you. Um, the next thing is Ascension Day, which is one of our most important uh, major festivals during the year. Quite often this takes place within our mission partnership at St George's. It's quite a small church and we're not sure whether we can accommodate everybody who would like to attend this year. So if you would like to attend, could you please let uh, Father Sean know tomorrow at the latest so that we can calculate the numbers that we need. And if we can't fit into St George's, then we'll consider holding it at one of our larger churches, but numbers would be much appreciated as soon as possible, please. And that's on Thursday, the 13th of May in the evening. And then finally, just an advance notice, a confirmation service is now in the diary for the 1st of July. Anybody wishing to be confirmed or have any questions about confirmation, please do ask us. Uh, we will be preparing both children and adults, and the details of those sessions will be uh, made available nearer the time, but that's a date for your diary and time to start exploring and asking some questions. So would you now please stand for God's blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good will, work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those you pray for and all those you love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ has claimed us as his own. 
He has brought us out of darkness and made us lights for the world. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.